All right, thanks for watching and welcome to the most fundamental first order PDE, which is the transport equation. And what it is, it's simply ut plus cux equals zero. And what it represents, it's simply, so u of xt is the density of a fluid at position x n time t, but that gets transported to the right transported to the right to the right at speed c. So the idea is as follows, namely you might start with the blob, so that's u of x t, so that would be a time t, and at position x, so u of x t is that density, and what happens to this blob, it just gets transported to the right at speed c, and becomes this different blob here. So that's what the transport equation models. And what I'm gonna do in this video, I will derive this transport equation from first principle. Because all it has to do is with the mass of the fluid itself. So, step one. First of all, consider an interval. Zero comma b. So here b is an arbitrary number. And let's look at the blob from zero to b. Maybe it looks like that. And by the way, this is at time t, or once again, we have this density. Then the question is, what is the mass of that fluid on that interval? And well, from physics or calculus, we know that the mass is just the integral of the density. So the mass of the fluid on, let's say, 0, comma b is simply the mass is the integral from 0 to b of u of x, comma t dx. Once again, we fix the time t and you just integrate the density over that interval, 0, comma b. Now, little subtlety. Technically, that should depend on t, because we're just integrating with respect to x. But our assumption here is that the mass is constant, which makes sense, because if you shift this blob to the right, then no mass should be lost, no mass should be gained, because it just gets shifted. So assumption, so m is constant. Now, this is what happens at time t. And now the question is, what happens if we increase time by a little bit? So, step two. After a little time step. So, let's say from t to t plus h where h is just a small number, what happened to that fluid? Well, remember, originally we were maybe at some interval 0, comma b, and then after h time steps, remember that fluid gets shifted to the right at speed c, so the new endpoints will be c times h and b plus c times h. So 
the C times H and the block might look like that. So that's a time T plus H. I mean, for instance, if H is one second and this moves at um, you know, four meters per second, then the new uh, position would be one times four, so four, and then whatever this B is plus four, because it moved at the um, speed of four. Okay. And now, what this is, is once again the density U of X comma T plus H, because we have the new time step, and the mass is pretty much still the same, except we integrate from CH to B plus CH, and we have a new time T plus H. In other words, what is the mass at this case? So M is now the integral from CH to B plus CH, and then U of X comma T plus H. So once again, what are the changes? T plus H, because now we're dealing with the future and those new endpoints. And once again, remember the mass is constant. And that is what helps us solve our equation. So once again, what makes this work is that the mass is always the same. So in other words, the mass on the one hand is the integral from zero to B, of u of x comma t dx. So that is sort of the present. But it's also equal to the integral from ch and then b plus ch of u of x t plus h dx, which is what happens in the future when things get transformed. So in other words, this integral equals to this integral. Now, the only issue is, well, those are integrals. Ideally, we want PDEs. So the first thing we want to do, we want to get rid of the integrals by differentiating. So what we have, and here's a trick, let's differentiate with respect to b. So d over db, integral from 0 to b, u of x comma t dx equals d over db integral from ch to b plus ch u of x t plus h dx. Now, there's two ways to proceed. Either you remember what the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 says, derivative of the integral is a function itself, or if you're not comfortable with this, which is okay, you can just use antiderivatives. So in other words, if you let capital U to be the antiderivative of little u with respect to x, so here capital U is once again antiderivative of little u, but with respect to x. Then what this becomes, well, d over db, so drag and ball, of capital U of b comma t minus capital U of 0 comma t equals d over db capital U of b plus ch t plus h minus, I hope you can still read this, capital U of CH T plus H. That's a time. Okay, all right. Now, here is where the magic happens. First of all, this quantity here does not depend on B. So it just goes to zero if you differentiate with respect to B. Same thing here. This term goes to zero because it doesn't depend on b. And then what about this thing? 
So essentially, you're just doing capital U prime, because it's with respect to the first variable here. So you get capital U prime of B comma T, which just becomes little u of B comma T. And same thing here, you differentiate this with respect to the first variable, so you get capital U prime, which becomes little u. So in the end, after this whole differentiation, you get the following, you just get little u of B comma T equals little u of B plus CH and then T plus H. Now, this is already good. We don't have any integrals anymore. Now, the only thing left is we need partial derivatives. And here's a nice trick. Now what we want to do, we want to differentiate all this with respect to H. So that's our last step. So now, d over dh, and then u of b comma t, equals d over dh of this thing, u of b plus ch, and then t plus h. Now, the left-hand side doesn't depend on h, so this goes to 0. And then for the right-hand side, because of this h dependence, we just want to use the chain rule. And so we end up getting the following. So u, remember, depends on x and t. So x, which is b plus th. And then t, which here is really t plus h. And then h. And then h. And then once again, we want to use the chain rule diagram ux times xh, and then ut times th. So once again, this becomes partial u over partial x. So now zero from this side is partial u over partial x times partial x over partial h, and then plus partial u over partial t, and then partial t over partial h, and then we get, well, you, this is just ux, and then x is b plus ch with respect to h, and then partial u, partial t, that is ut, and then t is t plus h with respect to h, and then after all the dust has settled, what do we end up getting? This is ux times c, so c ux, and then this is ut times 1, so ut. So if you combine everything, the right-hand side becomes ut plus c ux, the left-hand side becomes 0, so if you put everything together, Summa summarum, in the end, you get ut plus cux is zero, which is a transferred equation. Except one little subtlety, notice we have evaluated everything at b plus ch comma t plus h. Well, now what you can do, you can let h be zero or let h go to zero, and then you you have that this is true at every point b comma t and since b is arbitrary you really have this true everywhere so now you really have derived the transport equation all right i hope you like this if you want to see more math please make sure to subscribe to my channel thank you very much